Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on climatology. So in this session on climatology, we are going to learn about an interesting concept from applied climatology segment and that is urban heat island concept. So let's elaborate on urban heat island and before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about the concept of urban heat island. So this word island is very familiar in physical geography. Then what has it to do with something related to urban heat or urbanization and why are we studying this in climatology? This is important to understand. So first of all, this heat factor is one of the important factors that we have studied throughout the climatology. And when we attach this urban process with it, it becomes urban heat because this heat is part of the urbanization in that way it is linked to the urbanization directly and then there is this concept of island related to it. So island concept as we know it is a piece of land which is surrounded by oceans or water from all sides. But here in urban area what is this island all about? It is a particular built up area that we see this particular city if you see in this image this is a built up area which is different from the surrounding land use that is maybe agriculture or forest area. So this built up area is supposed to be in like a island which is surrounded from all sides by different land uses. And in center is the construction that is the city structure that is the urban structure. So this is like an island of heat and this is this concept which is said urban heat island or UHI concept. So basically it is studied under urbanization as well and under climatology or applied climatology as well. So let's understand in details that this urbanization which basically what we see is negatively impacts the environment in many ways. And one of the many ways is the modification of the physical and chemical properties of the atmosphere and covering all the soil surfaces with concrete structure. This is one of the ways in which we actually adversely or negatively impact the climate. So that is important to understand. That is the first point. And then the definition of this UHI that is urban heat island is basically what? It is a rise in temperature. That's why the heat factor is important here. So it is rise in temperature of any man-made area or you can say human-made area for that matter resulting in well-defined distinct warm island. It basically means this area has lots of heat accumulation only because of its particular land use because these area are concretized. These have different heat signatures. Remember, so this is important to understand that this area is heated up, right? And surrounding area is all cool. So that is why this is like an island of heat among the urban area that is important to understand. So that's why it is also called urban heat island as a concept. Now let's elaborate further more. So as you see in this particular image, this is about the temperature and you see this red zone or the increase towards this side where you find the maximum you find it in the built up areas right where you have more urban built up structures there is the temperature which is higher on site. So an urban heat island occurs where a city experiences much warmer temperatures than nearby rural areas that is the basic concept. So nearby rural areas have lesser temperature and urban areas have more temperature. That's why it is like an island of temperature that is heat. So the difference in temperature between urban and less developed rural areas has to do with what? Has to do with the surfaces that is there on this area. So surfaces in each environment absorb and hold heat. And remember the concept of albedo that we have learned earlier that is about the reflection. So albedo of different surfaces are different. So concrete structures have different albedo, soil has different albedo, sand has different albedo. So accordingly heat absorption and heat actually goes out as a long wave radiation after reflection. This process actually is different in different areas. So urban heat island decreases air quality that is where one more concern is by increasing what? By increasing the production of pollutants such as ozone decreases water quality as a warm waters flow into the area streams and also put stress on the urban ecosystem and the adjoining ecosystems as well. So this is where this heat actually generated by this particular built up area as we say. Built up is basically concrete infrastructure that we build like buildings, infrastructures like road, flyovers and so many concrete structures. So the soil part is not there. 
and concrete structures have this tendency to absorb more heat and then release it. So then what happens? It is like an island of heat that is created in urban area and that is where it has negative impact on the air quality, on the water quality, on the entire ecosystem that we need to understand as a concept in urban heat island. Now the phenomena, historically if you look at, was first investigated and described by Luke Howard who was a British manufacturing chemist and also amateur meteorologist in 1810. So you see the first half of 19th century where industrialization was happening and it was picking up. That is the first time when this person Luke Howard first discovered this phenomenon of urban heat island and his lasting contribution to science is the nomenclature system of the clouds that is also important that he did in 1802. So he was a person who is also regarded as the godfather of the clouds because he gave a naming system of the clouds that we have already studied and also sometimes referred as father of meteorology in some parts of the world. So that is important to understand that his contribution, this British contribution to the foundation stone of this urban heat island was laid in early 19th century itself and then gradually more concepts came in and more phenomena was actually described through different means of explanations through scientific evidences. So let's learn furthermore. So the question is why this phenomena? It means why does this happen? So an urban area is a city area that we know and rural area is out in the country area. So there is a difference. What kind of difference? In climatology, if we see the sun's heat and light reach the city and the country in the same way. There is no differentiation in that. But the problem is where the difference in temperature between urban and less developed rural areas has to do with how well surfaces in each environment absorb and hold heat. So if urban areas hold more heat, it means heat is trapped. So it will become an island and rural areas will not absorb much because there is no concrete structure. Soil is there, right? So it cools quickly, right? So it does not keep the heat with itself. So if you travel to a rural area, what happens? You'll probably find out that most of the region is covered with either green plants or they have soil. So farmland, tree cover. So these are the things that are important in terms of we say that environment friendly. So plants take up water from the ground through their roots as we know this diagram if you see and then they release excess water through this transpiration and by that they maintain this natural air condition that we say right. So why do we need greenery when we say that we need more green spaces because of this factor they actually condition our air they condition our environment. So when we visit a big city for example we won't see many plants. So there are more concrete structures. Instead what we see is sidewalks, streets, parking, then tall buildings, malls and most of these infrastructure that is created in the city is actually those materials such as cement, asphalt, brick, glass, steel and dark roof and all these material have a common tendency that is to absorb heat and keep it there in the surroundings. That is where this island of heat creation happens and that is why it is different from the surrounding rural areas. So this is the reason behind it. So what we see is that first of all those materials like asphalt, steel, brick are often very dark colors. They are black, brown, gray. So you remember dark colors are more absorbing heat. So dark color absorb all the wavelengths of light energy and converts them into heat. So object gets warm. That is one part. Thus what we see is dark objects such as building materials absorb more heat and that's why they also release more heat when they actually go into this second phase at night they release it. So you see in certain urban areas even during night time you find lots of heating effect because these warm temperatures which is absorbed during the daytime is being released at the night. So it never cools down really. That is an important feature. So urban building materials are another reason that urban areas trap heat and many modern building materials are impervious surfaces and that is why we see that these particular material trap the heat in themselves. They do not release it quickly. So this means that water cannot flow through the surfaces like a brick or a patch of cement like it and it would through a plant. So remember as through a plant the water goes inside in the deeper roots, it's not the same in this cemented area. So these are impervious materials or surfaces which do not allow the percolation of water inside the earth. And that is where this is a deregulation of water cycle and has adverse impact on the weather condition and long term climate. So this is important to understand that this is an adverse impact of urbanization that we study under urban heat island concept that is important to remember. Now, 
Let's understand the impacts of urban heat island. So first of all, look into this image. What do you observe? This is a rural area. Then you have a suburban residential area. Then you have a commercial area. Then you have a downtown, the old industrial town. And then you have urban residential, park, suburban residential, rural farmland. So this is the central part of the city, which is called downtown, which is more industrialized, remember? And this is a standard structure that was created in the development of suburbia that we say post World War II. New cities were made around the world. They were restructured. So old cities were now left and people went to suburbs to actually live. And these were the industrial cities which were left as downtown. So people still commute from the outside to this city. They go to work to downtown. They come back again. But this area still has this warming that picks up every day. So this is where you see the maximum warming in the core regions of the city. This is the whole idea behind this urban heat island if you observe in those important cities around the world. So urban heat islands caused by cities have altered the natural selection processes. This is the first important point that we need to remember as an impact. That the theory of natural selection propounded by Darwin is now altered by this concept because of urban ecosystem that is made on concretization, right? So it has a problem there. So selective pressures like temporal variation in food, predation, water are relaxed, causes a new set of selective forces to roll out for the creatures. For example, if you see within urban habitats, the insects are more abundant, gradually they are growing than rural areas. Why? Because insects as we know are ectotherms. And what does this ectotherm mean? This term ectotherm? This means that they are dependent upon temperatures of the environment to control their body temperature. So they behave accordingly with the environment. So making for the warmer climates of the city perfect for their ability to thrive. Remember many kinds of insects that thrive in this kind of warmer climate and that's why you'll see lots of insects and rodents in the city area as well. So this is one kind of alteration of this natural selection process. Earlier, a species used to develop on the basis of pure natural selection. But remember, in urban heat island concept, it is not pure natural, it is human made concept, right? That is where the difference is. So that is one of the impacts. Then. What we see further is that urban heat islands can produce secondary effects on local meteorology as well. Now local conditions, local climatic variations or weather condition variations for that matter in a short duration if we say that is important to understand is why what altering the local wind direction development of clouds and fog and changes in humidity and rates of precipitation. Now remember if concrete structure is a problem because of this interruption in the water cycle, then adversely it will impact the entire cycle of weather condition around it. So urban heat islands increase demand for energy consumption as well because if there is more heat, people will require more energy. During summers they will use ACs, fans, refrigerators and what happens? Remember, it has adverse impact on the environment in indirect ways as well. So one thing is the direct thing that we see is a change in the normal weather condition. And also the second indirect impact that we see is in terms of energy consumption. So more energy consumption basically is meaning what? It means more fossil fuel consumption, more energy consumption, more chain of industries to run your needs, right? That is important to understand that it is not simply an urban heat island, but it regulates and deregulates so many things around it. That is why it is more hazardous. Then what we see, UHIs, urban heat islands, have the potential to directly influence the health of people. Now remember, heat stroke, heat exhaustion, heat syncope, and heat cramps. These are very common in urban areas during summer specifically, right? Some studies have also looked into how severe heat stroke can lead to permanent damage to organ systems, organ failure, brain hemorrhage, heart disease, lungs disease. So many things have become common, right? So urban heat islands also impair the water quality. That is also important because the normal temperature of water is now made raised. So that is why it is now this raised water temperature is released into nearby streams and rivers and ponds and lake and that's where it also hampers the normal cycle, normal condition of the ecosystem. So that is why it is important. And additionally, increased urban water body temperatures lead to what? Lead to the decrease in diversity. Now remember, it influences the diversity as well. So that's why it is not just single water quality factor, but related factors as well. So another consequence of urban heat island is that it 
is increasing the energy required for air conditioning, refrigeration and that is what we have already discussed as well. So these are some of the most important points to remember while discussing urban heat island as a phenomena, as a process which has adverse impact not just direct but also several indirect impacts all around the human ecosystem and remember it is alteration to natural system it is built by human beings it's built by us so that is important point to remember here and at last let's understand some of the mitigation strategies that what are the mitigation ways or measures so white roof is one of the types that has that is being implemented in many structures now. So painting the rooftops white has become common strategy because it is more reflection thing, right? Then green roof, so green buildings and green roof concept is another concept. Then you have planting tree in the cities. So many cities are being made in a way where you have spaces for plantation. If there is a new society coming up, it has parks, spaces for plantations, these are important. And green parking lots. Remember, the parking lots are one places where the vehicular emission and vehicle also release heat, right? And parking spaces can be planned in a way where there is a shade area. So trees can be planted and that's where you'll have less of asphalt. It means more of soil on the ground so if you have more of soil it means it allows water percolation and that is where you can plan a good green parking lot so these are some of these strategies and you can think of more strategies and more examples from all around the world which is essential in current era of urbanization so remember the applied climatology part begins in one of the concepts that you have studied right now is urban heat island concept so now when we have discussed in details the concept of urban heat island in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on other aspects of applied climatology so stay tuned stay safe keep watching